In this video, we're going to learn how to accept input from the user in Python by using the input function. So we can output information to the user by using the print function. If we have print, and then we supply as an argument the string, enter your name. If we save our program and then run it, this will output enter your name to the terminal here. But what we would like to do is have the program pause and allow the user to enter an input themselves, like say Kevin, for their name. To do that, we can use the input function. So after print, we'll have input, open bracket, close bracket, to call the input function. We'll save our program and run it again. And this time, the program pauses here and we can enter in some input, like say Kevin, and hit enter. So now we're able to accept user input using the input function. Now to make this user input useful, what we'll typically want to do is store the user input into a variable. The input function is going to return the text that the user enters. So here if we have name is equal to input, input is going to return the text that the user enters, and it's going to be stored into the name variable. We could then output the name. We could say print hello, and then output the name to say hello Kevin, if the name Kevin is entered. We can save our program and try it again. I'll enter in Kevin again, and now we get hello Kevin. And so by storing the user input that the input function returns into a variable, we're able to then use that data in our program again later. Now it's very common for programs to prompt the user to enter in some information with some text like this. So the input function actually accepts an argument, and that argument is a string that will be output before the input function pauses to accept user input. So for example, we could have here name colon. So this will output the text name colon space to the terminal. Then the input function will pause to accept input from the user. Let's actually comment this out and then try out this program. So we'll save this and run it. So now we have name colon space and then it pauses for us to enter in our name. I'll enter in Kevin and hit enter and we get hello Kevin. We can use the input function to accept multiple user input values so for example, we could have age is equal to input with the string age colon here as an argument. This will prompt the user to enter in their age and we'll store it into the age variable. We could then print out their age. We could say print you are age years old. And if we save this and run our program, we can test it out. So I will enter in Kevin for the name and then for age, I'll enter in 55 and we get you are 55 years old. Now, what if we wanted to calculate and output the user's age next year? We might think that we could just add one to the age. So for example, that we could have next year is equal to age plus one to add one to the user's age. And we could output that here. We could have print next year you'll be, and then output next year. If we save this, and try it out, it's not going to work. I'll enter in Kevin for the name and 55 for the age. And now we get this error here. It says here type error, can only concatenate str, which stands for string, not int, to string. So what's happening here is that the input function actually returns a string. That's the type of value that the input function returns, where a string is essentially a sequence of text characters. If we did want to use age as an int value, so that way we could add one to it, we would have to convert it to an int value. We can use the int function to do that. So here we could have age underscore number is equal to int age. And this int function is going to accept the string age as an argument, and it's going to return the int value for that string. In other words, the age as a number that we can then add one to. So here we'll have age number plus one to take that int value and add one to it. If we save this and run our program, now I'll enter in Kevin and an age of 55, and we get next year you'll be 56, and the program now works. There are other types that we may need to handle. So for example, the int type is for integers, which are numbers with no decimal places. Floating point numbers, or floats, are numbers that can have decimal places. So for example, we could input a price. We could have down here, price is equal to input price colon. 
Now, what we could do is actually perform the type conversion right here. We could have float with this call to input as an argument. And what's going to happen here is that input is going to return a string for the price. And then float is going to take that string and convert it to a floating point value, which will be stored into price. We could then output the price after applying taxes. So we could have after taxes is equal to price multiplied by 1.10, because we're going to say that taxes are 10%. Then we'll output the after tax price. So we'll have print after tax colon, and then we'll output after taxes. We can save this and test our program out. I'll enter in Kevin for the name, 55 for the age, and then for the price, I'll enter in 250. And we get an after tax price of 275. So this time, we've successfully converted the string returned by input to a float number, which we're then able to multiply by 1.10 to produce an after tax price. So this is how we can use the input function for user input in Python. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers.